We begin this evening at 5 o'clock with a developing story and a scary situation. A shooting happened right outside Legacy Emanuel Hospital this afternoon in North Portland. So we want to let you know that nobody was physically hurt, though the building there sustained some damage. Our team at the scene counted at least six bullet casings on the ground. Police say the shots were fired in the parking lot and appear to be directed toward the emergency department entrance. Police have not made any arrests yet. There's also no word on what may have prompted the shooting. We'll keep you updated here and at KGW.com as we learn more. Let's get to our other top story this evening and a grim statistic for the Rose City now with a record number of people killed in vehicle crashes. According to numbers from the Portland Police Bureau with over 10 days to go until the new year, 2022 is already the deadliest year for traffic fatalities in over three decades. Bryant Clerkley joins us now. Bryant, you have some perspective on what may be a contributing cause behind many of these crashes. Yeah, David and Laurel, the latest death happened last night in North Portland. According to Portland Police, 66 people have died on the roads in the city this year. One of the main issues with a lot of these crashes is speed. And this was the scene Sunday night on North Columbia Boulevard in North Interstate Place. Police say a man was hit by a car around 9 p.m. And when they got to the scene, he was already dead. The driver did stay. The Portland Bureau of Transportation says in 2021, 63 people died in traffic crashes. 27 of those were pedestrians. This was the highest number of deaths since 1990. This year, the trend is still moving in the wrong direction. One man who walks around the intersection of North Columbia and Interstate Place says he's almost been hit. It's pretty dangerous. Everybody flies through here so fast and it's, it's ridiculous, really. They gotta take a little bit more caution of the crashes are in high crash corridors. There's an interactive map that shows where a lot of these crashes and deaths happen. Port, uh, Portland police say pedestrian fatalities are at a 70 year high. And there's a candlelight vigil on Wednesday in remembrance of a 70 year old woman who died when she and her husband were hit by a car in Northeast Portland. One year ago, it happened on Northeast 44th in Fremont. Gail Phillips, friends and family will be there just after 5 p.m. to dedicate that crossing to her. And that neighborhood has been working to improve pedestrian safety in that area. Just a reminder to slow down, especially when it gets dark so early. Thank you, Bryant. A driver's been arrested and charged with DUII after police say he struck a man on the Markham Bridge. Police say the victim was hit on northbound I-5 while outside his vehicle early this morning working on a mechanical issue. Officers described his injuries as life-threatening. No update on his condition. Now, northbound traffic was routed to I-405 for most of the morning. The suspect, identified as 31-year-old Aldrin Rhoda Barraquillo, was arrested and booked at the Multnomah County Jail. Caught on camera this morning, it's a wild crash on 217 in Beaverton. A viewer sent us this video showing a black pickup truck swerve through traffic, hit a box truck, and then go through a guardrail and off the road. Amazingly, police say nobody was hurt in this, but it did take a while to remove the truck after it crashed. They're still investigating and say citations could be on the way. Well, let's give you a live look outside now from our Wells Fargo Sky Camera. It's been a mainly dry day today, 42 degrees, but just in time, you knew it, for the holiday travel rush, there is a strong possibility that is all about to change. Daisy Caballero in for Matt tonight. Daisy, we are talking about the two words nobody loves this time of year freezing rain. Oh my gosh, David. Yes, that was that's what two separate models are actually forecasting. So they are really starting to think that we are going to be seeing some freezing rain. Now this is going to be impacting us from Thursday night into much of Friday because we're dealing with below freezing temperatures for much of both of those days. So impacting Southwest Washington and also the Northwest Oregon portion all the way also into the coast. So if you have any plans to drive uh, before or after the holidays. Make sure that you do see what conditions are happening because again, this is a very strong potential. Now we're expecting for that snow to turn into sleet to again, the potential for freezing rain. But right here, we are going to continue to see what is happening because things can most definitely change. Back to you guys.
Boy, not what we had in mind when we were thinking about a white Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Daisy. At least two Portland businesses were broken into over the weekend. And for one of those businesses, it isn't the first time, nor of a second break in. As Christel Kumway reports, there is a growing frustration over the trouble they're facing. Shattered windows, broken glass everywhere. This has unfortunately become a familiar sight and regular occurrence for businesses around Portland, like here on Southeast Division, where Portland police responded to a burglary at this Boost Mobile store early Monday morning. They found an outer window broken out, a damaged door where they say the burglar tried to access products but failed. But over in downtown Portland, somebody uh, damaged the business and steal a couple of things from the business. Yeah. Owners of Dar Salaam a family-owned Iraqi restaurant on Southwest Alder say they weren't so lucky. Trust me, this is not the first time. This is uh, more than one time. Co-owner Jay Sahib uh, says this is the fourth time they've been broken into in the past year and a half. The most recent one early Sunday morning was caught on camera. You can see someone walking around the restaurant with a big backpack on. It's not enough really safety in downtown Portland. The thief damaged windows, stole liquor bottles and some cash. But for Sahib, it's not about the money. We're talking about how much effort through years. We've been running this business for nine years in downtown. This business make us laugh and this business make us cry. They now hope leaders will hear their cry for help. I really, I really encourage the city to help the small owners running business downtown because it's really, it's not help with, we don't need support with money. We need support with the cleaning. We need support safety. We need to bring downtown Portland like before. Before, when boarded windows and doors were not the norm for businesses across the city. Cristal Kumwe, KGW News. Really disheartening there. Speaking of crime, we have been reporting on how the state has an ongoing shortage of public defenders, and that means in Multnomah County alone, hundreds of felony cases are being dismissed and thousands more delayed. Investigative reporter Evan Watson's in the newsroom tonight. Evan, our colleague Kylie Boshi had a series on this. He talked to victims, the accused, their lawyers about the breakdown in the system here. And now you have found out more about what types of cases are being dismissed most often. Yeah, David, car thefts top the list, but some others are right up there as well. The Multnomah County District Attorney calls this a public defense crisis, and in his efforts to help address this issue, his office is sharing dismissed cases on a weekly basis. That means we know what type of alleged crime is most likely to go unpunished. A familiar scene in a Multnomah County courtroom. A judge, a defendant, but no public defense attorney. There is no attorney to appoint to you today. Willie Chotzen is a public defender who says his peers are working as hard as they can, but it's not enough. And there's not an, a, a shortage of attorneys. People are going to law school. They're just not choosing this work because it is hard, um, because it is stressful, because we are in the front lines and because it is underpaid compared to other legal professions. Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt says the lack of public defenders is an urgent threat to public safety. Individuals suspected of a crime have a right to counsel. Victims of a crime have a right to justice. In many cases, neither is happening. Between February and now, more than 300 criminal cases in Multnomah County were dismissed due to a lack of public defenders. More than 2,200 cases have been delayed until a later date in hopes that a public defense attorney will be available. Schmidt mentioned his frustration in a previous interview with KGW. There is a whole host of factors uh, that play negatively into our ability sometimes to bring a successful prosecution. Courts dismissing the cases because there's not a defense attorney is one of the most recent. So what kinds of cases are being thrown out? New data from the DA's office shows more than half of the dismissed cases are property crimes, and a majority of those are car thefts. The DA's office reports 80 car theft cases were dismissed between February and November. Among person crimes, nine assault cases and six robbery cases were dismissed for a lack of counsel. There are two other case categories that make up the bulk of remaining dismissed cases. A felon in possession of a gun and eluding police. About 25 cases of each were dismissed over the last 10 months. I think it's important to understand, I think the pandemic worsened or exacerbated or revealed a lot of these problems, but these problems are not new. You know, there have been studies going back 20 years in Oregon that, that we're not funding public defense as much as we should. District Attorney Mike Schmidt is part of a group that's working on a legislative and budgetary response to this public defender shortage. 
And he said his office is tracking and publishing this information to show how this part of the justice system is crumbling. David? And we are going to be tracking potential solutions here. Thank you, Evan.